Hey everyone, Dr. Clark here. Today I'm going to be sharing with you a neat study that shows how PCOS patients have a high rate of Hashimoto's. This is a study that came out in 2011, and this study has some really cool points to be made. They, they didn't even know they were making some of these points, but I'm going to share with you. Essentially what they did is over 12 months they took 78 women that were diagnosed with PCOS. So if you don't know, PCOS stands for Polycystic Ovarian Syndrome. It is the the most common endocrine disorder affecting women. It typically causes infertility. Um, usually PCOS is thought of as mainly like a blood sugar problem or a hormone problem. But what a lot of people don't seem to realize is that PCOS is very much associated with autoimmunity and very much associated with Hashimoto's. I've seen that in my practice uh, time and time again. A woman shows up with a history of PCOS, a history of infertility, Come to find out, if you do the right test, she's got Hashimoto's. Uh, do some things to help her manage the Hashimoto's, and you know she's able to, to get pregnant. But what this study showed is a couple of important things. So they took these 78 women diagnosed with PCOS, and they compared them to a control group of like 300 women, a little bit over that, and they set some uh, you know the parameters. So what would what would count as a positive TPO value? What would what what would mean abnormal, and what would be a positive TGB antibody? So. TPO antibodies are what you test to see if you got Hashimoto's. It stands for thyroid peroxidase. It's inside your thyroid gland. Uh, the other antibody that you can test is called antithyroglobulin antibodies, and that's inside your thyroid gland. So if you've got elevated antibodies above a certain cutoff, you've got Hashimoto's. So in this study, there it's uh, uh, in the Middle East, the cutoff was greater than 100 would be equal positive for TGB, and greater than 75 would be positive for TPO. Here's what they found. They also, by the way, they did a physical exam on all these women to see what was the rate of goiter. How many these people have goiter, right? Well, here's what they found. Goiter was really associated with having PCOS. Uh, specifically, 24% of the 77 patients, the PCOS patients, had a goiter that no one had checked before. No one thought to think, well, maybe this person has a thyroid problem. So that, that in itself was a very interesting finding. Now, in relation to the TPO antibody finding, and there's a real big point about this, I'm going to explain in a second. 72 of the patients had their TPO antibodies levels tested. And the mean level of that was 216. That's two times the limit that they set to say, hey, you've got Hashimoto's. So, so, so that's a lot of people in the PCOS uh, group that had Hashimoto's that no one knew about. 30%, 30% of those patients um, had positive antibodies. They meet that criteria. So 30% of those PCOS patients had Hashimoto's, but no one knew it. And the reason it matters is, is if you've got Hashimoto's, it's going to complicate you being able to get pregnant. It's going to complicate you being able to maintain a pregnancy. Very important differential. Um, the controls, this is what's interesting. Out of the control group, 27% of those people had positive TPO antibodies. So their control group is supposed to be like the normal healthy people, but 27% of those people had TPO antibodies above the cutoff. So what that tells you is Hashimoto's is really, really, really common. And they didn't really comment on that, but I thought it was a very interesting point. Now, in terms of the thyroglobulin antibodies, here's what they found. In the control group, 30% uh, of the people in the control group had positive antibodies for thyroglobulin, so they would be Hashimoto's. In the PCOS group, 37%, I'm rounding up, 37% of the people in the PCOS group had thyroglobulin antibodies. So here's what we know. PCOS is associated with Hashimoto's, and Hashimoto's is associated with PCOS. So if you've got PCOS symptoms, or if you've got Hashimoto's symptoms, now you can understand the connection. So what do you do about it? Well, number one, you can't really take this study to your doctor, because if they read, they would already have known about it. Um, all they're really going to do is try to give you some medication. So you need to find someone that understands what do you do for Hashimoto's. And, you know, I've got a lot of videos that you can watch that kind of explain that. But you're going to have to find someone that knows how to look at Hashimoto's from a functional perspective and not just get blinded by this label that you've been given that says PCOS. Got to look beyond the label and do some detective work. Now, one last thing I want to point out. The TSH levels, the thyroid stimulating hormone levels between the PCOS group, between all these people that had Hashimoto's, um, and the controls didn't differ. So what's that tell you about TSH? Not very important, not very reliable when you're looking at these things. So I wanted to share that with you. If you've got PCOS, find someone who understands Hashimoto's. And if you've got Hashimoto's, you need to find someone who understands uh, infertility and what to do about those things.